evening everyone. I'm only seeing those who are my Facebook friends. So I'm not seeing the presence of other people. But um, let's give it a few moments so that those who are who are going to join this session will find the video stream. So we'll start in a few moments. So this is the fourth, fourth session um, on knowing awareness or Rigpa as it's known in Tibetan in Chokchen terminology. So Rigpa literally means uh, knowledge. The Sanskrit translation for Rigpa is Vidya, V-A-D-Y-A, -A, Vidya which means to know or knowledge, knowing. So in Chokchen teachings, in Ati Yoga, Chokchen is a Tibetan word that uh, refers to certain practices and also traditions. And um, it literally means great perfection. So uh, the Sanskrit yogic term for Chokchen practice is Ati Yoga, Ati Yoga, which means like a, a yoga of pristineness or primordial yoga, uh, yoga of primordial state of mind. And this, this state of mind is none other than what uh, Buddhism discusses. Um, the same Christian mind is what Buddha nature means. So this is the fourth session on this topic that I've uh, guided and taught lately. And um, um, last time we were going through um, knowing awareness related to uh, different senses um, and finding this basic knowing basic awareness, basic cognizance at the basis of all um, sense perceptions through touch, through hearing, <coughs> through seeing, um, um, seeing, tasting, hearing, yeah, those. So um, this time I was thinking of um, continuing on this topic uh, from the from a slightly different point of view, that of mind in movement. So finding this knowingness, this um, pristineness, pristine purity in when mind is in movement. So um, mind in movement means thoughts and emotions and also subtle energy. Um, of course, uh, Buddhism speaks about samsara, which means going around in cycles, confusion, confused mind, and also liberation of it, nirvana. So, um, it is this mind that is in movement, takes the form of different thoughts, emotions, emotional reactions, uh, this whole complex that arises from this um, basis of mind, that is, I often call it substrate consciousness or substrate mind. So these forms, uh, thoughts and emotions, come from this uh, basis of mind or substrate mind. I guess you could call it with the word, word subconscious mind. 
So this subconscious mind is sort of like fog or mist um, in the energy body or in the mind. And um, well, maybe I won't mention more about that. So uh, Buddhism speaks about this samsara going around in circles in one's mind, being confused uh, because of this um, um, uh, identifying with different thought content and just, you know, um, automatic re automatically reacting to different things. So there can be some memory in the mind or somebody can say something to you and your mind automatically reacts and you causes this these reactions uh, causes our whole being our mind to contract to become narrow and um, small maybe you could say contracted squeezing into into something that is constricted so um, this is what samsara is and it happens because our mind uh, has this self or me, I in it. Um, so the way to get out of that wheel of samsara, uh, wheel of wheel that goes round and round, is to see that this mind, um, all these thoughts and emotions and this subtle <coughs> subtle fog, subtle mist <coughs> is actually um, there is there actually isn't uh, something solid or independent entity me, I in there so Buddhism the solution that Buddhism Buddha Dharma um, has come up with is to look and study these different objects mind phenomena that arises in the mind and simply seeing that same awareness, same uh, purity, same pristineness, same knowing in all these different objects that come up in the mind. Um, so yeah, this is Vipassana, Vipassana meditation, Buddhist meditation. And Vipassana is practiced in different forms and um, the main method of, of open heart is open heart yoga, which is tantric practice. But um, let's start with first recognizing, finding this knowing awareness and then um, um, I'll give some instructions practical pointers of this Vipassana meditation in the light of knowing awareness in a non-tantric or sutra um, application. So um, sit in a good upright posture. Sometimes people when they sit down um, they start to become tense. So don't do that. When you sit down, take your time, a few moments to find a good posture. You don't have to, when you sit on the chair or on the cushion, you don't have to immediately become like a rock. So the body-mind is an organic uh, system. It's soft. So give it a moment and let the energies flow. And what I mean by that is that um, you let all thought energy, emotional energy, all of that, your breathing, your vital energy, this energiness, you let it flow naturally. The first uh, technique in open heart yoga is sitting down, aligning the body in a good posture and then um, releasing the tension, releasing holding from the body by scanning the body. 
So do that. Uh, you can have your eyes closed or open, however you like. You can let the breathing flow through the nose, in and out. But you can, um, also the mouth can be, the teeth can be um, lightly closed or slightly open. And also the lips either closed or slightly open. I often like to uh, have the jaws little apart and also lips little open while breathing through the nose. In the previous sessions that you can find from YouTube, Open Heart YouTube channel, I was giving different practical uh, tips um, how to assist this, these basic techniques. And one of those is to relax the area of the mouth and jaws. And this directly affects the chattiness of the mind, you know, running at the thoughts. That eases noticeably. So feeling into the body, relaxing the muscles that muscles in the belly, solar plexus related to the movement of the movement of breathing. Relaxing shoulders, chest. Releasing this holding that can happen in in very deep way in the body especially if one is very busy in daily life, in work, in study, whatever activities, this holding tension can get very deep in the body. So for the first couple of minutes we release that holding. And what happens is that um, the identification with thought processes eases, relaxes a bit. And instead, in our mind, we can feel and sense this spaciousness, inner spaciousness instead. Instead of cat... Um, following this thought and that thought and that thought through relaxation we can become aware of the space where these thoughts appear and this is very important very useful If you feel like taking a few deep breaths, please do. the body, different parts of the body, even deeper, very, very deep relaxation and letting go of holding.
mind becomes calmer, thought processes calm down. But even if they, if they don't, that's perfectly fine. So, a few pointers to help to find uh, this basic knowing, Rigpa. Feel into the body. Feel your body. Simple as that. Feel the physical body, feel the space inside the physical skin. When I tell you to do that, what happens is that your attention uh, gets directed from here, from the head space, from the level of the eyes, down into the body. It's sort of like, without moving your head, one does this. You start to look down into the body, into the torso, to the cavities in the legs, to cavities in the arms. So this directing of attention happens when we feel the body and scan the body. So our attention becomes directed just like if we have a um, lamp torch and we switch it on in a in dark room we can uh, point it at different places and the beam of light uh, enables us to see what is in different parts of the room it's the same thing the torch the, the light of the lamp is directed here down into the body But where does this directing of attention, where does it originate from? Instead of looking down into the body, feel back into the headspace where the attention is aimed from. Again, you, get, you can direct your attention down into the body. Let's say, feel the, uh, feel the belly, gut. Here, the, again, the directing of attention happens. And when it does, simply look back, feel back into the head. To the origin of that attention. A 
Let's do that one more time. Feel into your arms, hands and fingers. And then from hands, arms, feel back into the head. If you get it right, if you are able to, how should I say, detect or get into that basic knowing, knowing awareness, what happens is that it's sort of like <coughs> unwinding, like being simply open instead of doing <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of trying to find something or fix something, do something, you kind of arrive in this simple openness. Openness of mind, openness of being, openness of effortless knowing. Rikpa. So when we feel down into the body, for example, or if we do some, use some other uh, sense, listening, seeing, ears, eyes. Uh, so when we feel into the belly, for example, we constantly uh, use this atten attentiveness. We are attentive. There is some effort there that is held, like a certain kind of pressure, certain kind of effort, certain kind of squeezing that happens. But with this basic knowing, there is no squeezing. There is no pressure. this knowing awareness, natural state, which is a good term for it, good name for it. It's just uh, this relaxed openness. Not sleepy, not distracted. Something very simple, not at all complex, and also very joyful. I was talking about the three basic characteristics of knowing awareness in the previous sessions, and these three are to remind you um, knowing, cognizance, that it simply knows, is aware, knows itself, without me, without entity. So first, knowingness. Two, it is alive, aliveness. It is, um, it's subtle, but it's very, very alive. Like, I like the analogy of rainforest, aliveness in a rainforest. All this brimming of life. That kind of aliveness. And three, 
it is perfectly grounded, settled, balanced. So we aimed our attention down into the body or into the belly and from there, from this directing of attention, looking back into the into head where the att attention is aimed from, looking at the origin of attention. And when you look back, feel back into the head space, the area around here, in the eyes, in the head, completely relax. There you don't need to be attentive or um, try to find anything. And if you uh, manage to do that, relax that effort, relax being attentive, relax being concentrated, this knowingness, simple knowingness, shows up. If you aren't yet sure, if you got it, if you found it, you can do this exercise, looking back into body or belly, and from there, looking back into the head, feeling back into the head, and relaxing eyes, relaxing ears, relaxing muscles in the face, in the head, in throat, neck, jaws. And even uh, if you get a glimpse of it, like a half a second or a second, that's excellent for one session. In open heart practice we talk about these boomies or grounds. And, um, I've talked about boomies, I don't mean to talk about boomies now extensively, but I'll just mention that um, those practitioners who have up to 11 of these boomy openings, ground openings, which are known with different names in different schools of and vehicles of Buddhism, when you have up to 11 of those, this basic state, basic knowing, becomes really, really um, obvious, and you don't have to look for it anymore. So this can certainly be done with Open Heart Yoga. You can find Open Heart Yoga information from the website if you feel like checking it out. So, um, what I've been talking so far is the same what I've been talking in the, fr in the previous three sessions. Um, and this session is particularly about mind in movement. So, um, thoughts. Let's talk about thoughts and emotions. So, um, as I mentioned when we, be, when we started, it is thoughts that are charged with the sense of self, sense of meanness. And f first of all, what is meant with meanness? Um, in our daily life, in daytime, in waking state, also in sleeping during sleep, rest, we have these thoughts and different kinds of emotional reactions. For example, uh, when we talk, talk 
discuss with somebody. Um, we use the word, the thought, the concept of me and I. We say things like, well, I don't think so. Uh, I don't feel that way. Uh, me, on the other hand, I think like this. Uh, um, my opinion of this and that differs. We do this all the time. We have this, constantly have this thought of me, I. And also we talk about others, you and them, and so on. So, um, this is just to indicate how we actually think and feel in our daily life. This happens in so many different forms, but essentially the flavor of it is the same. This sense of meanness is there in different thoughts, emotions and reactions. Emotional reactions. So, it's that uh, meanness, entityness, selfness that we are interested if we want to uh, become free in the sense that Buddhism, Buddha Dharma discusses freedom. Um, so there are two, two kinds of thoughts and one of them, first one of them is subject self, I, me. For example, um, when I'm in the experiencing the emotion of anger, I would ex express that emotional state with the short sentence, I am angry. I am angry. So in this simple example, there is this I, me, that has identified with the emotion of anger. I that experiences anger, this emotion. It can be any other emotion. But in the case of any other emotion, it's the I that identifies with that emotional state. So, this is what, what, what in open heart teachings is meant with subject self. Subject means like, a, oh no, now I don't, <laughs> I can't explain with, with my English the meaning, the terminological definition of what subject means, but it means this first hand um, selfness in this case. So, we talk about subject self and to release or liberate this subject self a sense of subject me, we have this simple practice called two-part formula that you can f find from the website. In Finnish it's kaksi osainen ohje. Uh, so, subject self and the second kind of thoughts we have is object selves. And what, what I mean with object selves is, uh, in the example of I am angry, is that this I identifies with some object, some thought. So, happens this unity. I unites with this um, any thought content. Um, and I think that emotional states are, are uh, good examples of this. Anger, um, anxiety, um, greed, uh, whatever emotional states. Um, so this is, this is what is meant with the difference between subject self and object selves. I hope you understand it. I've written about this and talked about it, about this quite extensively, but I, I hope this example um, clarifies it enough. Mm. 
So Buddhism talks about samsara, samsaric mind, that is that um, this going around in circles happens because of this sense of meanness. And it's this meanness that we need to become aware of if we are to gain any freedom or liberation in, in according to the Buddhist theory. Maybe in this session I will continue talking about object selves. I've talked about subject self and awakening and two-part formula so much that those who aren't familiar with it, you can find a lot of material from the website and YouTube channel. So here the assumption is that this subject self or I from the head, it's already been seen through. It's already been neutralized. And what it means is that when somebody who's had that first awakening, first boomy opening, in daily life repeats the word, the concept of me or I, it is only a word without this emotional charge, without this narrowing effect. But then there are other thoughts and emotions, these object selves. In sitting practice, um, which is what Buddhists usually um, emphasize, yogis emphasize, when we sit um, longer than a couple of minutes, these all kinds of thoughts, uh, ideas, fantasies, dreams, plans, these start coming up. These are thoughts and emotions. Mind taking the form of thought and emotion. And by definition, in confused mind, these thoughts are more or less charged with a sense of self, sense of feel of meanness in them. So a very effective way to disarm these thoughts in a non-tantric manner is to first find this basic knowing that we spend the first half an hour of this session and from that basic knowing when a thought comes up you let it be, you don't control it in any way you know, a thought comes up and it stays for a while and then it somehow disappears until second thought comes up, stays and disappears. And this keeps happening all the time, more or less. You can have few thoughts or you can have a lot of thoughts or momentarily you might have no thoughts at all. But anyway, this is the um, workshop, you know, the work that one has to do. And this is how you do it. So from this knowing awareness, this basic knowing, when thought comes up, you simply, should I say intuitively, feel, see whether this thought or emotion has the same clarity of knowing, simplicity, selflessness in it. So you try to intuitively feel this clarity in the risen object, 
recent thought or emotion. If you detect that it, this thought actually has a uh, or emotion has uh, this sense of uh, darkness or heaviness or narrowness in it, then you just stay with it and try to see if that same knowing is there, if that same clarity is there, selflessness, selfle selflessness is there. And you simply keep doing that, this again and again and again when thoughts arise. If it happens that uh, this knowing, basic knowing, Rippa, if, we, if you lose it, then simply return your mm, attention to the head and relax all muscles in the head, eyes, jaws, cheeks, scalp, ears. and relax the body. What we are doing here is exactly the same thing that is taught in the two-part formula. So, these are the instructions. Let's Keep sitting for several minutes.
whatever thought, emotion, reaction or sensation you have, feeling into, intuiting into the selflessness, knowingness in that sensation, in that mind content.
So what happens with um, the practice of Vipassana is that if we didn't practice Vipassana, if we didn't see into the selfless, empty nature of mind content, we might make the uh, assumption that this knowing awareness is separate from this, from this mind content. So there would be a duality. We would experience this knowing awareness as a, a, like a background, background, and then these thoughts might in movement as a something separate, something different than the background. But what happens with Vipassana practice, and this is very, very important uh, in the light of basic Buddhist practice theory, is that this knowing awareness is not background. When we see into the knowingness, um, wakefulness, clarity of these mind objects through removing the sense of self from them, we experience this um, wakeful nature that has the three basic qualities also in when the mind is in movement. And this is uh, freedom or liberation uh, in according to Buddhist practice. So, whether the mind, awareness, knowingness, if it, if, it, if it is still, without movement, or if it moves, it's the same uh, body of reality, body of truth or dharmakaya. I would like to ask um, you to close your eyes. I feel like asking Guru Rinpoche's blessing for us before the basic prayers to conclude the session. Dear Guru Rinpoche, dear Yeshe Tsong Yang, with love, with sincerity, an honesty. I would like to ask your blessings for each of us joining this session, for our liberation and for the liberation of all sentient beings. When a prayer is said or a blessing is asked, it always comes. So when you make the request, remember to receive it with your body-mind. 
feeling Guru Rinpoche's and Yeshe Tsogyal's presence. Receiving it with your whole physical body. With your whole being. Namo Guru Rinpoche. Namo Yeshe Tsogyal Ma. Then let's chant the basic prayers. You can find this if you are not familiar with these basic prayers. You can open the English version of the Open Heart website and then go to Open Heart Info and Introduction Practice. And at the lower part of the page, you can find a Refuge, Bodhicitta, and Dedication of Merit. <coughs> I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in his pure land. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take
then absolute refuge. I am the Guru, I'm in the pure land, I am the Buddha, I am the Dharma, I am the Sangha. Again, feel the refuge. What is the absolute refuge? Feel the energy of it, the mind of it. Bodhicitta, may all beings be free three times. May all beings be free. May all beings be free. May all beings be free. And the absolute bodhicitta, all beings are free three times. All beings are free. and dedication of merit. May all beings receive my accumulated merit. I dedicate the merit to the refuge and to all sentient
then join hands and bow your head. Okay. Um, thank you everyone for joining the session. This um, video will also be uploaded to YouTube so you can review it later if you like. Um, next week uh, there won't be a webcast on Tuesday but um, in two weeks time from now there will be the next webcast. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining. It was nice having you and uh, see you later. Thank you very much.